Hi, Gemini. Welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for December 2019. For you, Gemini, this month begins with lots of relationship activity in your seventh house, which then translates into some more intimate activity or stuff to do with your connections with other people, um, share, uh, shared things such as shared finances and so forth. I think Julia has some details about that, especially in the relationship department. What's that, sure Julia? Do, yeah, hi, Gemini. So in the beginning of this month, Venus is going to start in your eighth house of intimacy. Uh, so that, that means that you might have that sort of urge to more, merge more deeply with a partner because Venus is the planet of love and relationships. So that means that you might try to find ways of merging more on a sexual level or a financial level and even on a mental level as well. And then when Venus enters the ninth house uh, on December 19th, um, the ninth house is Jupiter's house, which is a very kind of like fun-loving, adventurous planet. So when Venus goes through the ninth house, people are generally feeling a little less possessive in their relationships. Maybe you are less possessive of a partner or you want your partner to be a little less possessive of you. And if you are partnered, you may want to sort of go out and try new experiences with them instead of stay around at home because Jupiter rules experience, you know, anything new, anything that expands you. Yeah, adventures. And yeah, it's super adventurous. So that's where you're going to want the relationship arena to be lit up around. Mm. And if you're single and you happen to be traveling over the holidays, since the ninth house also represents, um, it's a very kind of like international um, travel oriented house, it might be a good time to find a little fun holiday romance or flirtation too. Now Mars, which is the planet of action, the planet of activity, it's your drive, it's what gets you out of bed in the morning, it's going to be in Scorpio all month, which corresponds with your sixth house. And the sixth house is the house of work, it's the house of health, it's the house of habits. So this is a really good time for maybe initiating a new fitness regime or trying to get some better habits around fitness because Mars is such an athletic planet. Mm. And you also may be a lot more driven at work to work. Um, you know, the ancient astrologers said that Mars was known to be in its house of joy in the sixth house too. Mm. Um, and then I'd like to talk about Mercury. Mercury enters uh, Sagittarius on December 9th, and that corresponds with your seventh house uh, because Sagittarius naturally opposes you, Gemini, uh, having a Gemini ascendant. Uh, so Mercury, which is a planet of communication, uh, it's a really good time for any type of negotiations that you have to do because the seventh house is a very one-to-one -one type of house on a social level. Um, it's great for any type of counselor or uh, consulting or finding a, a counselor or consultant on any matters that you'd like to learn more about, whether it's a psychological counselor or a legal consultant. And then uh, Mercury enters Capricorn on December 28th, and that corresponds with your eighth house of security. Uh, so that means your mind is going to be turned to your greater security needs. Maybe thoughts of like how you can reduce your debt, to, uh, excuse me, your, your debt too because that eighth house is also corresponds with shared resources of all kinds what else is going on this month jamie mm, i love that you're mentioning mercury because mercury is such an important planet to gemini and i'm just thinking oh, it's such a relief just that mercury retrograde is over oh my that god mercury retrograde of last month wow what a doozy mm. right gemini oh man so now that mercury is not retrograde anymore but direct is moving forward and speeding up Oh, what a feeling. So nice. Uh, so we've got some moons, including a moon in your sign, Gemini, and that is happening on December 11th. Let's take a look. Right here in your first house. So you might feel like the tides of emotion are building up in you particularly strongly and that other people are mm, opposing you, shall we say, in your arguments. Now, the thing about Moon in Gemini is that it can have such a powerful force of emotion behind it that that emotion in trying to express itself in words can come out in a cascade of words which don't even feel adequate to express the emotion. So with the result that sometimes Gemini Moon can be like a sort of a chatterboxy moon that, that you know, full of sound and fury signifying nothing. And, um, and that's not to say that the emotions behind it aren't real, not in the least, but um, 
But this is a moon that tends to overthink it, overexpress it, and and frankly worry quite a bit too much about it. And I and I hmm, when I see Gemini's in my office, I tend to, you know, prescribe meditation, which all Gemini's hate. They don't want to do meditation, but just a little bit of of taking time to sit and be with yourself in uh, in a calm, beautiful, placid, tranquil environment, um, and just turning the brain off for a little while can be so restful. And during this moon, I would particularly recommend that. And I think that really the reason why this moon is so uh, liable to provoke anxiety is because the square to Neptune brings in this feeling of um, of sort of vagueness. Of um, as if the anxiety is free floating, not attached to anything in particular, but just sort of out there all over the place. And because you might feel like you're in a sort of a, I don't know, holding pattern or a state of suspended animation, that might actually just increase the anxiety as you find there's just nothing that you can even really point to. Because Gemini likes to solve the problem, right? And if there's no problem to solve, well, Heck, you got to sit on your hands on what could be worse for Gemini. So, you know, just take a break and do some meditation. Get some solitude and uh, and stop thinking so much under that moon. Okay, and we've got a video about it, by the way, in the December news playlist that you should check out. It might give you more, more clues than I can do right now in this little horoscope. So there is a new moon and solar eclipse coming at the end of the month right on Christmas. So if you are a Christmas person you're probably going to find that there is <coughs> a lot of um, a lot of intensity going on during the holiday season. And this is because eclipses show us our shadow. They, um, they turn us around to look behind ourselves at the stuff that we're not really looking at very clearly in the light of day, stuff that we're kind of unaware of about ourselves. I like to describe eclipses in terms of shadow agents, planets that assist the eclipse or are right there with the eclipse that um, sort of add to and pump up its energy. In this case, Jupiter. So Jupiter is kind of cool to have in the mix because it suggests that even though, you know, eclipses are dark, we can grow from that. And particularly falling in your eighth house, there could be some powerful energies exchanged between you and other people because this is a house of sharing. It's a house of intimacy of all kinds, emotional, physical, and financial. So there could be some powerful conversations that are had uh, among family members about things like, inheritances or extreme health conditions or um, um, monies, you know, debts and loans among family members. So um, look at this as an opportunity for you to grow and, and shine the light of positivity into the situation. And, uh, and things could turn out really, really well. Um, goodness, you know, I haven't said much about that Jupiter, but I just want to say I'm really a fan of Jupiter moving into Capricorn, which it's doing this month for the first time in uh, about 11 years, uh, 12 years. It's, it's not been in Capricorn for quite a while. And um, it's got this 12 year cycle, so it moves into Capricorn every 12 years. And uh, Capricorn being the sign of career and, uh, and structure and authority and um, self-discipline, Jupiter is going to trigger a growth process for all human beings in those ways while it's in Capricorn. And for you, this has a lot to do with taking responsibility for what you share with others and how you do so. And that's really uh, a million dollar statement in a very few words because that could be pondered all year and maybe should be. We've got a video about Jupiter's move into Capricorn. You should check it out in the December news playlist. And it, it wouldn't at all be surprising with all this activity in your eighth house if you wanted to find out more about, um, about the luck that you might be having in the relationship department because the eighth house is particularly the intimate relationship department. And Jupiter's move there suggests that, well, you could get lucky, right? So um, a lifelong love reading could really flesh out all those details. And I think that's all we have for you today, Gemini.
It's been fun talking to you. I hope you had much, as much fun as we did, and we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye. Bye-bye.